Hi everyone, Liz here, thanks for stopping by. So let's have a go at putting those pesky little teardrops onto this canvas. Um, I did promise this quite a few weeks back and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a go at doing it now. Okay, so this is the uh, little owl tree that I got from Timu, uh, fully completed, apart from all the little teeny tiny teardrops on all these flowers here and here and here and here. So we've got plenty to practice with. So I'm going to take this cover sheet off. Uh, the only bit that's sticky actually is that down at the bottom. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to cut this little bit of plastic off from the bottom here and uh, so just cut this little sliver of plastic here to just put over here so I don't keep putting my wrist in it. Seal it, that will be sealed so yeah we won't need to worry about it but it's all these little flowers and we have, have all these little teeny tiny teardrops to put on these canvases so i've put them in numbered bags so i know which is which and i've kept the little packets because there is gem codes on these as well so that is d so we'll do the little purple ones first so yeah we need to find all these little purple d's all around here to put those on and i have got my art dot light all plugged in ready to go so we'll see how we get on i'll show you first what i actually use um i've got all my other tools and bits and pieces out as well to have a play with uh, i have done this before on special drill canvases but not specifically uh, showing you how to put the teeny tiny teardrops on which is what i've been asked how i actually do it so yeah i'm going to show you how i do it not necessarily the correct way to do it just how i do it <laughs> Okay, I do love this little owl tree. It's so cute and that owl is gorgeous. Right, so let's get started. We need a tray first, don't we? <laughs> so I'm just going to use this a little white tray for now. It doesn't really matter what tray you use. Um, because they're small, I don't want a great big tray. I want to try and keep them all enclosed a little bit. I've not opened the packets. I have just kept them in the packets and put them uh, in the numbered bag so I knew what number order I was going in. So right, we'll slice that off there, put all those in there. And then as I say, this has actually got the gem code on it. So I'm going to cut this out as well, as I have done with all of the others in the uh, little uh, bag there. Oops, you can't see it, can you? <laughs> All of the others in the little bag there. Yeah, it helps if you actually uh, just don't talk to yourself and show people what you're doing, Liz. <laughs> All right, throw that one away. So we'll throw that bit away and then we will put this in this little bag here. So we know when we put the spares back in there. And I think there will be quite a lot of spares in this one. Okay, so let's give these a good shake. Try and get as many the right way up as possible and you have them all facing different directions and what I try and do is pick them up in the direction that I want to put them on the canvas you can turn your pens round and whatever but I find it's easier if you pick them up from uh, wherever you're picking the canvas up from what's that Ooh, oh look I've now I've just spilt some I'm looking at this little round blue dot here uh, I've got a funny feeling that that's just dropped out of my pen Yes, it has. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd put wax in my pen ready to go and it's just dropped out. So that was a good start, wasn't it? Oh, dear. You know, when you start a video and you think maybe I should just start again. Let's just put those back in there. Let's pick those up and put those back in there. Just got them all nicely lined up and then pick them up and they all fall out. Yeah, I should have used one with a nozzle. I'm sure I've got one with a stopper. I think this one was possibly a Diamond Art Club one, to be fair. Right, okay, let me see if I can find my stopper. Right, I have a stopper. They will no longer escape. <laughs> Which way up does this go? Does it go that way? Yeah, it goes that way, look. So that's in now, so they're not going to escape out that end. Right. So the pen that I mainly use these days is the Silhouette Pick Me Up tool. They're actually for more for uh, paper crafting 
uh, they've got like blue tack inside these. If you've got a die cutting machine, you possibly have used them. They came out with the silhouette machine, which was the electronic die cutting machine, which is where it cuts out the shapes. You put a shape onto your computer and it will cut that shape out in paper or thin card for you. And some other materials as well. They did get better and better as the years went on. And these were like um, to use to get the little tiny bits out. You know, if you've cut out a little landlocked piece, really, really intricate. And this one also comes with um, like a pokey tool on the end there. Not sharp, really. Bit pointy, but not sharp. And then like a little, well, straightener, basically. Or like a little teeny tiny scraper there as well at the other end. I always keep it inside there with the point in. Or to be honest, when I'm using it downstairs, I don't actually have this piece in. Um, but I will you put it in for now so you can see what these are. So this is how they come. This is a silhouette pick-me-up pen. And uh, yeah, so it's more blue tack in the end. You have to be careful uh, when you're actually using these and turning this little... Um, dial or this little screw here because as you turn that more of the blue tack comes out of the end i've been using this one on crystals look i think you can see that is that is quite grubby at that end focusing yeah it's got quite a grubby end and that's as you get like the dust and bits and pieces that are coming off the gems and i find particularly with crystals you get a lot of dust and um well, muck, for want of a better word. So, yeah, that's one of those. Uh, it does come, say, with the lid as well. I do like the fact that it's got the lid, and I do always try and put the lid back on when I've finished using it so it doesn't dry out and it stops any extra dust or whatever coming onto it. I always have at least one of these spare. You can refill them, but because I'm such a heavy presser, I tend to find, because this end is only plastic, that I do quite often split that end. Um, this one's not so bad at the moment. I've not been using this one all that long. But uh, yeah, this is only plastic with the best one in the world. And I have noticed now uh, another of the big companies, We Are Memory Keepers. Uh, this is a big American company. And they've brought out this quick stick, which I believe is exactly the same. It just looks like it's a slightly different coloured rather than blue tack. It looks like it's a green sort of tack or wax or whatever. But it's still exactly the same design, exactly the same shape. They've just brought out their own. So, you know, if I see them on special offer, I do just tend to pick them up. And this one's got like a little bit showing you there. Look, just to pick it up little bits. The grip for picking up small gems as well to put on cards and things like that. Um, and for, say, getting out landlocked pieces, picking up things that, you know, if you've got a lot of glue on something and you want to pick it up and put it in a specific place, then, you know, you're not having to use your fingers or use tweezers if you don't want to use tweezers. So that's what I mainly use. And uh, to be honest, but I think everything else will work more or less the same. Um, the companies that I deal with, um, GBFKE, Fan Cells, one day saving all of those do actually sell these pens and the one that came out uh last year sometime i think and again these work on a similar principle where you're actually turning this screw at this end and then you well it's like a wax or sticky putty or whatever it is in there will come out the end there the trouble is with these it does come out really really fast and you don't want that amount because if you've got that, it's going to stick to your canvas. So I'm just going to turn that back a little bit and I'm going to have to take that off the end there now because I don't want uh, that over the edge. So, yeah, there is these and these are metal and I did try using them. But unfortunately, I found in summer that uh, the one I was using, I got this because it's a see through one. Um, I found that all of the wax melted. I mean, we did have a particularly hot summer, but all of the, uh, well, gel or wax or whatever that was in it actually melted into there. And uh, yeah, I had used it a lot, but I'm going to have to take that out and clean it now because it is exceptionally sticky. So yeah, <laughs> but they are a lot cheaper than the silhouette pickup pens as well, but they work more or less on the same principle. Right, I wonder if that'll go in actually, rather than wasting it, I wonder if that'll go in my pen. Let me have a look. See if I can put that in my uh, pen, because I'm going to have a go at doing it with uh, a metal tipped pen as well. And it's got hot pink in it. Yay! 
Uh, I do believe this was from Amazon, this pen. Just try and get that in there. So it's a brand new nib, so sometimes you do find that your wax or your gels will come out of your nibs, particularly the metal ones. They don't seem to grab onto uh, it as quite as well as the others. So that's that done. All right. Okay, so let's get this light switched on. And I've got it on like the daylight light. I'm going to try and keep it out of the way, if I can, of the camera. Let me just pop all those to one side over there for now. Uh, put my lid there as well, otherwise I'll be losing it. Right, I've just done um, a few trial ones because I wanted to try and get my camera in the right place so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> right, because uh, I want you to be able to see where I'm placing the gems and uh, where I'm actually taking them from as well. So let's try this and zoom in right so when i pick one of these gems up um i find the best thing to do is give them a bit of a shake get them a few different ways around get them into the lines okay so because i tend to find that if you pick the gem up so that it's facing the way you want it to go on the canvas it just makes life a little bit easier and then i use my pen and rather than putting it over the top I try and grab like the bottom of it, the little bulbous end. So let me see if I can show you this. There you are, look, you can see I've got just the bottom end of the teardrop and the little point isn't actually in the pen. It is just sticking out slightly. When I bring my gem down to place onto my canvas, then I'm placing it the right way around. So I want the bulbous end at this side and the point in the middle that way. So then I'm going to do the same thing again. I want one that's facing that way. So I pick, oops, I pick that one up there. Sorry, I'm trying to do this at a distance. Usually I'm quite close to it. So this is probably looking a bit more awkward than it needs to be. And then when I place it down, I turn the pen as you can see the pen nib so that the gem is placed in the right way and then i'll try and do this this way around when i'm doing the ones going the other way i pick it up from the bulbous side again but this one is pointing the other way sorry i just knocked my light and that dropped off <laughs> so pick it up from that side sorry i'm conscious that you can't quite see what i'm doing maybe i should have put the camera on the side so that it's looking sideways it's all trial and error this is something i've not done before so yeah pick it up from the little bulbous end with the point sticking out and put it down there i've started another flower look as well now because i'm on a funny angle all right that one wants to go that way so we'll put that that way there's one just jumped at me look so we'll grab that one off the desk hey, hey. we've got an escapee but we've managed to catch him and then turn my pen so that's putting that there and that's what i find easiest to do um i said just grab the little bulbous end rather than trying to pick up the whole thing i've tried with tweezers it's just not going to work sorry i'm having trouble seeing which way around these are that's better get some that are actually in the trailers and then pop that one that way and then i want one going the other way again come out the way you Okay, so I pick that one up and put that one down there, that's it. And then this, with it being the silhouette pen, actually has a little straightener on the end. So if you have found that you've sort of like put one slightly wonky, you can just give it a little nudge with your little end there that you've got. And bear in mind as well that these are poured glue which means that it's like still a tacky glue. So when you're uh, putting your gems down, the glue is going to start to dry because it's now sort of like in the air, as it were. It's now exposed to the air, so it's going to start sort of contracting and it may move your gems. So just be aware that at some point your gems may need a little bit of an extra nudge because they may move. But yeah, I find, as I say, pick up the bulbous end. It makes just life that little bit easier and just put them down. Okay, I've probably made that look harder than it needed to be. But let's have a go at this flower then because I'm getting a bit into my stride now. I can see more what I'm doing and uh, then just picking them up and putting them down. It's a little bit blurry for me because I'm just that little bit further away than I would like. 
So, oops, that one dropped off, look, so let's just grab him again. Is he the right way up? No, he's not. That's why I can't pick him up. <laughs> Give them another little shake. Okay. Why is it that whenever you want to pick one up, they all seem to be going that way, and I'm wanting the ones going that way? <laughs> They're just plain awkward. All right. So try and if I was left handed, you see, it'd be easier, but then you wouldn't be able to see the right hand ones that I'm doing. And that's another one that way. Okay. And then pick one up that way. And put it down that way. So I'm no expert. This is just sort of how I've learnt to do it and how I've found that they sort of stay on the pen that little bit easier. Right, so we're gonna do this flower here. Uh, right, trying to keep it in camera as well. <laughs> right, let's give them a bit more of a shake and turn my tray around the other way. This is what I do all the time. Um, I turn, you know, I shake my gems and then I turn my tray around. Yeah, nearly everyone's facing the way. I don't want it to go. So I hope you can see me. Oh, I've picked it up from the middle there. That doesn't happen very often, I have to say. Uh, it is easier to pick them up from that little bulbous bit there. So, oops, let's get one that's going that way. Okay, because what you're doing with any of your diamond painting, any of your gems, you're picking something up with a, like a tacky uh, point or a tacky uh, pen and uh, you're wanting to pick it up so that it actually picks the gem up without dropping it. But then you don't want it too sticky that when you put it onto your canvas, it doesn't let go. You've got to get that fine balance between. So that's that one done. So let's move around onto the next ones now. Shout at me if I su you suddenly find that I'm not in shot. <laughs> and we'll give these a little shake around again. So let's get the ones going this way first. Okay, And it's a case of you do get faster as you go along. Okay, so we'll use that one and that one. And I've managed to pick that one up from the middle, but as I said, I do recommend really, if you can pick them up from the middle, great, but I do tend to try and grab the little fat end, as it were, the little fat bottom. Okay, and put that on there and grab that one. I'll do this one last flower using my pickup pen and then we'll have a bit of fun and see if we can use any of the other items. So again, pick it up that way around there. I have got the pretty places, which are similar to like a wax crayon, um, but they are quite expensive. They come from a lovely lady in the States and yeah, they're quite pricey. To be honest, I tend to find that the postage actually costs more than the pencils to sell. I'll have a go at using this one. They all should still work on the same principle. So th these are the sort of cheaper versions of the Silhouette Pickup. We'll see how this one works. I'm a little bit worried that that might still keep blobbing out the end. And when you're using them on a canvas, then if that gets onto your canvas, it's awful to get off. So it is a case of, you know, using it and getting used to using them okay so right so we'll pick up from the bulbous end again that's picked it up really nicely okay uh, it hasn't got like the straightener on it but it has got a metal nib so the metal will allow you to uh, move it into place and obviously it's not going to crack or snap as i am a very heavy uh, diamond painter uh, right, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I've moved out of shot again. I'm moving it so I can see it myself and then it moves it out of shot for you. <laughs> yeah, this wax is still coming out of this one. So let me just give it a bit of a pressing. So I don't want it going onto the canvas. So again, we're going to pick that up from the little fat end there and turn it around so it's going on the right way. Because I'm not used to using this one, I've not got quite as much control. And I am having trouble seeing, because the light's quite bright, I'm having trouble seeing uh, which way up the gems are as well. So that one's going to go there. And try and pick this one up there. Oops. And pop it down there. So that one decided to, uh, yeah... That one decided to just grab onto the edges because I've got a bit of wax on the edges. 
So, okay, that's that one. So let's do another one using this just to uh, see how we do. Give these another shake again. I hope these aren't too bright for you as well. Um, right, so that one's going to go there. Yeah, I'm finding that this is quite thick, actually. It's a little bit unwieldy. Um, this bit here is thick, so it's knocking up against the other gems and making things move. And it's just not quite as easy to pick up as with my silhouette tool because the plastic sort of rim of the pen isn't as thick. Uh, all right, so we'll just grab that one there. Oops. But, you know, it's each to his own. You've got to get used to whichever tool you use. Um, and I've used several, and I do like using my pens because I like to have a posh pen. Um, but I still do go back to the silhouette because I find I can diamond paint with that a lot quicker. Right, so I've done a couple with that one. So we've tried that. So now let's try the actual diamond painting pen with the... With the uh, let's try the diamond painting pen with the metal nib, and it has got the uh, glue in, has got the glue in it from um, this pen. So yeah, we'll uh, have a go. We'll have a go and see where we are. Right. So again, it should really work on the same principle of picking up the bulbous end and putting it down where you want it to go. Turn this tray around because they're all going the other way. <laughs> should have done that before, Liz. And uh, yeah, oh, this is quite good. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Pick it up there. Okay. Yeah, this because this has got that sticky stuff on it, and it is on the edges. It is picking them up um, from the middle, but then it is picking them more than one up, and that can get annoying because they can drop onto your canvas then, and. Uh, yeah, then you can't see where, then the, you know, then you've got to pick them off. So you don't want that either. Right, we've just got another one here. So let's have a go at doing this one. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this is actually working better than that um, screw top pen that I've just used because the nib is thinner. The little end is thinner. That one I've picked up the wrong way around. And pick that one up, and that can go there. And then I want to be picking them up going the other way. Obviously, you won't be filming, um, and you won't be sort of like having to stretch your arms out to do this. But yeah, um, so that's worked quite well. I so say I do like my pens, and this one's hot, hot pink. So yeah, I do like these. So that's the uh, metal nib on that one. Let's just do one more with this one then um, we've still got plenty to do because i've got all the pink ones to do as well <laughs> okay so pick where are we where are we we're there pick that one up there and pick that one up oops do the set of the right flower i'm moving flowers now look and then let's see if I can pick that one. I do apologise that uh, you can't quite see my hand. I should, yeah, if I do this again, I will put the camera on a different angle. But uh, it was mainly showing you how I pick them up um, and how I do them. But I am looking at them through uh, my lens. So, yeah, I'm seeing them huge. Let me show you these gems. Look how big they are. <laughs> so small huge <laughs> so i don't really mind too much doing smaller ones they are a little bit more fiddly but they still look huge to me when i look through my magnifier <laughs> okay right and i'm just gonna have a i'm just gonna have a go now with the pretty placer as i say they're they're actually um smell as well this is warm vanilla sugar i doubt that these still smell because i've had them a long time um, but yeah, they're like a wax crayon, but they're like your diamond painting wax. But I find because, even if you put a really fine tip on them, um, because you've not got like anything metal to uh, guide it along, you tend to find that it sort of softens the end of your pencil. So yeah, I tend not to uh, like using these quite so much for these. I do use them um for all of my diamond painting when i'm doing my special drills my large special drills 
but if we're doing something fiddly if you suddenly find you need to move it then i do find it a little bit more difficult you see it's picking these up but if i now need to move it it's going to squash the wax if i try shoving it so you would have to have something else to move things along with but yeah these are excellent for picking up special drill gems and say so pretty places are what i use on all of my special drills um particularly large gems you know if you're wanting to get them into the middle yeah you see i can't use that to shove it because it blunts your end and it squashes the wax it's uh, not good for your pencils so that's that one there okay okay so for me i still like using my silhouette pen so i'm going to finish this off um, and have a little bit of a chat with my silhouette pen. Oh, I've got a couple of more of uh, those to do there. The Pretty Play Set, yeah, is brilliant. As I say, I use that for, well, I've got a few of them. Um, I use these for all of my big specials because they really do grab um, really easily. And you can sharpen them in your normal pencil sharpeners. Um, so you can get a really fine point. But because this is quite soft, it doesn't last a huge amount. And I would definitely say that that, to your normal um, pens or even your pink pens probably um, work better but I, f I found because that's metal it's again good for shoving things along that to me let's see if I can get that let me switch this off because it's skewing my light isn't it that to me that that end on this one is just too thick can you see the thickness of there and it's got this like extra nib bit there so it's the same sort of width there, well, circumference there, but then it's got this extra bit and that's banging up against the uh, gems and it's moving things out of place. So that one wasn't quite so good for doing small things. Okay, but yeah, I you know, if you're used to using your normal diamond painting pen, then as long as you're picking them up from the bottom end, from the little fat end, then it should make it a little bit easier. But uh, give it a try and let me know what you think. Uh, let's get this finished off now. And as I say, I'm going to use good old faithful, my uh, silhouette pickup pen, because this is what I like to use. And I don't want this to go on for the next four hours. <laughs> um, if you want me to explain it any further, then do let me know. But I think I've more or less explained how I do it and uh, how it works. So I can do it a lot faster now that uh, I'm not having to make sure I'm in the right camera angle. That dropped off. Um, I am still, for my liking, a little bit far away. I am using my desk lamp. So pick that one up there and pick that one up there. Okay. So I did promise I would get this done. I do eventually get everything done. It just takes a little bit longer. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, as I zoom in, I'm further away, so <laughs> I can't say what I'm doing. Right, so I think this is the last purple one. So let's get these all put on. So how is everybody? Um, I hope you're all doing well and life is treating you as kindly as possible. Um, I know there's a few people going through a few things at the moment. And uh, big hugs to you all. I do feel for everybody, you know. And life can be very, very tough sometimes. But uh, hopefully, at least there's diamond painting. Just have a go and uh, just forget about things for a while. Right, have I done all the purple flowers? I think I have. So let's get the pink ones out now then. So that's those done. Okay. And come on, everybody out. Everybody out. Uh, you can use those little brushes as well if you want to, um, to get your gems out of your trays. I do do that sometimes, but uh, I've managed to do it with my finger today. Do you know, there's another one there. Look, these have escaped everywhere. They're just so small. Uh, yeah, they do tend to like to run away. So let's get uh, these now. These are the E's, which are the pink ones. Oops, cut the right end this, otherwise you'll be cutting the strip off with the number on. Pop those into the tray. Everybody out. Come on everybody out get rid of that bit right just want to cut this bit of the packet off okay and there and there okay right and that in there so we know what number we are and let's put this back on here before i shake them and put them everywhere 
yeah these are definitely diamond art club uh, trays that i've got from diamond art club the new ones the new in part of the newer kits that you get right so let's uh, sorry make sure you don't get the light in the way and let's have a go at this Okay, I'm trying to turn it down a little bit. Put the warm light on. I think that's that makes it a little bit duller for you to see. That might be a bit better. So yeah, oh. so yeah, that's a bit better. So right, let's pick these up and put them on. So yeah, I've had a bit of a week again, just for a change. Um, hubby's still going for his dialysis. He's doing okay, but uh, yeah, last weekend. He decided to fall off the bed and he landed on his shoulder and his shoulder has one huge bruise going all the way across the top of his shoulder, uh, down his back onto his shoulder blade and all down his chest. So, yeah, he's made a really, really good job of it and, uh, yeah, he's uh, in quite a lot of pain with it. So we're having, well, struggling really to move him. Uh, but of course he needs to move because he needs to keep moving um otherwise it's going to seize up and the trouble is then you start using if you've got something that hurts you start then using other muscles don't you and uh, when you're using other muscles and holding yourself differently then that starts making other things ache so yeah he's uh, not in a great place at the moment shall we say um, he is still going to his dialysis and they're having to help him get on and off the bed and I'm having to help him get on and off the bed. Uh, I'm having to grab him by the back of his trousers and help him move. That hasn't uh, gone down very well, but it's just really the best way I can sort of manage him uh, with the best will in the world. You know, he says, well, I don't weigh that much, but it's not how much you weigh. It's how much you can help because if somebody's a dead weight when you're picking them up, um, yeah, it is quite difficult so yeah i can't uh, pick him up on my own but you know most days uh, when he's okay he can help me so i don't have a problem but at the moment as i say things are just a little bit difficult and then my washing machine decided to go kaput so yeah i put my washing in and i thought well that's strange i've not heard it spinning so i went out to the garage and it had, the uh, finish light was on and i thought oh i don't remember hearing it spin and when I looked inside, everything was just sopping wet. And I thought, oh dear. So I took it all out and I thought, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I've uh, not put it on the right setting or maybe I've put too much in or whatever. So I just put um, one of our like, big fleecy blankets, which don't weigh a lot um, and only fill up probably about half of the washing machine and uh, see if that went. And it just literally filled up with water um the detergent didn't even really melt the little detergent pods that i use uh, it didn't even really melt and uh, then it just emptied so i ended up with a really really wet blanket so i thought oh no that's the last thing i need because i do do a lot of washing uh, and i you know i need my washing machine so I thought, oh, heck where am i going to get a washing machine from i can't get hubby out to the shops at the moment because he's having to take uh, more of his painkillers than normal and um, they are quite strong and uh, yeah they do sometimes you know he has strange dreams with them sometimes and oh that one's determined it's not going on look <laughs> and uh, yeah i have trouble um you know he's, he's not good if he goes to sleep and wakes up so i don't like to leave him on his own um you know he can wake up doesn't even know what time it is uh, the other day it was two o'clock in the afternoon that he woke up and he thought it was two o'clock in the morning and he thought he was in bed and he wasn't he was downstairs in the chair um i know you see you know we can all do that but yeah it's um some of the tablets that he takes so yeah i have to keep a close eye on him and if i can't get him in and out the car then I can't go out to look for a washing machine. Oh, no. So I decided, well, I'll have a look on Amazon. Um, I had a look in Curry's, which is our big electrical shop. It's Curry's PC World. But there's, I don't know, they always try and flog you all the extra bits and pieces, you know, the insurances and everything. And I just can't be doing with it. And I couldn't really see 
anything that I wanted. I always do try and read the reviews as well that other people have left. Um, and I always take some of them with a pinch of salt because I think, yeah, you've, you know, maybe had a free one or, uh, yeah, you've maybe done it to review it or whatever. So, yeah, I just, uh, as I say, take some of them with a pinch of salt, you know, just think, oh, well, that's not true. But I do always like to try and look at the reviews. And I tend to, to be honest, read the more neutral and negative ones rather than the good ones because, you know, you find out more from the negative ones. And I thought, um, you've, if you've been with me a while, hello, hello, welcome back. If you're new, hello, hope you'll stop uh, and stay with us and subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, I uh, have always had this like thing with my washing machine where it taunts me because my washing machine doesn't have a digital um, like display on it. So I never really know how long is left on it. So, you know, when you hear it go on to full spin and you think, oh, yeah, it'll be finished in a minute. And uh, our um, washing machine is in the garage. I thought, right, I'll I'll uh, just stay here because it's going to finish in a minute. And then it, it would get to a point where it would sort of like it'd finish and you think, ha, the door will open in a minute. And then it'd go whoa, 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 one way and whoa, 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 the other way. And then it would start spinning again. And you think, oh, for flipping X sake. And you'd be stood there for at least another 10, 15 minutes waiting for it to finish. In fact, at one bit, Hubby got really, really panicked because he thought I'd fallen over in the garage because I'd not come back in after going to get the washing. <laughs> so the first thing that I was looking for was a digital display to tell me how long the wash cycle had to go. So, yeah, that was a definite... Uh, that was a definite um, must-have with my uh, new washing machine. So I was looking at that. Plus, I decided um, I wanted one that had a really good quick cycle on it, a quick wash. Because sometimes, you know, things get a little bit grubby, but they don't necessarily need to have like a two-hour wash. Um, you know, the, it can do um, a little bit quicker just to freshen up. You know, like if you've been out for the day and your jacket's just got a little bit grubby, you know, like you um anorak type jacket or something like that um you know sometimes it just needs to freshen up so this has got a quick wash that's for, only goes for 28 minutes which is fantastic um i mean that would have been great when the uh, grandkids were little because you know i'd have been able to as that one turned around it has um because you know their clothes gosh they don't need any washing at all really and it would have been great when they'd fallen over and got mud on them or something just to quickly throw it in for a quick wash and then get it dried quickly and put them back in it again because kids always like clothes don't they and yeah i know our daughter when she was younger she had her favorite it was like a little pinafore dress and i'm not kidding you could just never get it off her to wash get it off her to wash and it was so worn that you could practically stand it up on its own in the corner of the room on a night you know she just never took it off and in the end she had to stop wearing it because it got too short <laughs> and she was showing just a little bit too much so yeah <laughs> but we used to have to wait while she'd gone to sleep and then sneak into a room and take it because she said no don't put it in the wash i want to wear it tomorrow so yeah it was like operation steal the pinafore dress and get it in the wash and get it back as soon as possible <laughs> so yeah we wanted the quick wash so that was like two things plus i wanted it a good capacity as well i didn't want a small one um and i wanted a good spin speed as well so that they're as dry as possible when they come out so you know you put all that into your search and I look, say I looked on Amazon and I thought, oh, you know. And then some of Amazon ones, um, they were like charging like £30 for delivery. And then they wanted £25 to take away the packaging. And then another £25 to take away the old washing machine. And you're like, whoa, hang on a minute. You know, this is just ridiculous. Why don't you just make the washers a bit more expensive? Or why don't you just include it in the service? Yeah, it was just mad. So anyway, um, I thought, I know, I'll have a look on that AO website. I don't know if you've seen it, the AO, let's go, um, on the adverts. Because they do washing machines and people have said they're really good. And uh, I had a look on there. And it was certainly, they had the same one that I'd seen on Amazon. Uh, and the, uh, the takeaway service was certainly a lot better. Some of the Amazon ones that I looked at didn't even offer a service they literally would just deliver it so they didn't um 
they didn't unplumb it for you and um, they didn't replumb the new one they didn't take the packaging away and they didn't take your old one away which out of anything washing machines absolutely weigh a ton because they've got that big bit of concrete in the bottom so there was no way i was going to be able to get one of those in the back of the car to take it to the tip and i didn't really want to have to pay to have somebody to come and get it and i didn't particularly want it sat outside the house until the rag and bone man came round again or the scrap metal person as they are now aren't they? they're not well, I don't know. He still shouts rag and bone when he comes round anyway, but he's got a lorry, not a horse and cart. <laughs> I know when I was younger, we used to have the rag and bone man come round with his horse and cart, uh, collecting any old rubbish. And it wasn't just metal then, they used to take all rubbish. And I used to get a balloon if my mum gave him anything. So I used to really like that. <laughs> you know, I'd be going rummaging around the house so we could give him something just so I could get a balloon. <laughs> Dear. so yeah anyway this ao um i put it in because and our lovely friend uh, who lives across the road from us said well he would disconnect it for me and then he would reconnect the new one um if you know we could just get them to take it away and uh, he says oh well i can put the packaging in my car but i thought well they might as well take the packaging uh anyway so i went on to ao's website and uh, was looking round. have i done all these now just have a look I have. I think we have a finish. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, I went to, onto AO's website and actually they have like this AO club. So it was actually, I think it was on special offer to join the club for, I think, $39.99 for the year. So I should get special offers. And I think they do groceries and all sorts of AO. So I need to look into it a bit more. Um, and that was actually cheaper to join the club and get free delivery and then get free takeaway service and free unpacking uh, than it was to actually pay for the packing and the takeaway and all that. So I thought, oh, well, I might as well do that then. And I might save something, you know, if anything else goes electrical, I might save some money um, on those as well. So, yeah, it was um, a bit of an eye opener. So I never used them before. And plus as well, um, it was Wednesday night that I ordered it and they delivered it today, Friday. So, you know, that was amazing. Um, the other thing I do find, it's really, really cheeky and it's really naughty of these companies. I know they've got to make money um, and I know petrol's gone up an awful lot in price, hasn't it? But yeah, and it's gone up another two pence again. It had come down quite a bit and now it's going back up again without anybody saying anything. Um, and uh, yeah, they wanted, if you wanted to have um, it delivered standard, which meant it would come any time from 7 o'clock in the morning till I think it was 8 o'clock at night. Then it was free with this AO membership. If you wanted nominated morning or afternoon, you had to pay £20 on a Friday. If you wanted nominated on a Saturday, it was £35. Just to say whether you wanted morning or afternoon, I thought, oh, forget that. I mean, we're in anyway, so, you know, I made sure I was up at seven o'clock this morning. As it was, they sent me a text message saying it would be delivered between nine and I think 11. And then I got another text saying it would be delivered between 10 and 11. And then I got a phone call from um, the young lad that delivered it. And uh, yeah, it was actually delivered. I think half past 10. He said, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. And he was. And uh, they just took the old one, um, unpackaged the new one, put it where I wanted it to go. And uh, yeah, off they went. The only thing that, well, made hubby laugh and I was just aghast at it was the little truck that they actually brought it in um, didn't have a tail lift. So they couldn't sort of like wheel the washing machine onto the tail lift and have it go up on the lorry and then come across. Uh, no, it actually, they had to lift it up and put it in the back of the lorry. And I'm like, blooming heck, that must be heavy. Anyway, they managed it. So I think I've probably waffled on for quite enough. Um, we have now got our little uh, owl tree done. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, um, I've used my art dot light, so we'll have a go at doing some further whip and chats, um, and I'll have a go at doing that again. I will get better at sort of like seeing long distance, but this is the first time I've done it. Um, we've had a go at putting all these little teardrops on, which haven't taken too long. Uh, you know, it's certainly um, using my normal tool that I use has made that a lot quicker. 
but yeah i think that's really really fun and then we've just got our little base to stand him in as well so he's all done so it will need sealing uh, i think i'm going to go around the edges with either a brown dark brown um or a black pen or i may even go around with the colored pens that match whatever there is on it just to sort of like make the background disappear because I don't like seeing the white bits on the background and at some point I will do the kitting down on that one as well but I'll save it for now I don't want this video to be too long okay well uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little chat and I hope and I hope you've been able to see what you needed to see and I hope I've asked, answered a few questions about putting the teeny tiny teardrops on okay well if you've enjoyed this video as always a thumbs up is very much appreciated any comments or questions in the comments down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and if you want to join our little family and see what we get up to next then if you press that subscribe button down in this corner and the all notifications bell that pops up you'll be notified when any of my videos come out so you're not going to miss anything yay okay thanks ever so much for stopping by and i do hope to see you all again soon bye for now